Curzio Malaparte, Italian pronunciation, Curzio Malaparte, the 9th of June 1898 to the 19th of July 1957, born Kurt Eric Suckert, was an Italian writer, filmmaker, war correspondent, and diplomat. Malaparte is best known outside Italy due to his works Caput (1944) and La Pelle (1949). The former is a semi-fictionalized account of the Eastern Front during the Second World War and the latter is an account focusing on morality in the immediate post-war period of Naples it was placed on the Vatican's Index Librorum Prohibitorum. During the 1920s, Malaparte was one of the intellectuals who supported the rise of Italian fascism and Benito Mussolini, through the magazine 900. Despite this, Malaparte had a complex relationship with the National Fascist Party and was stripped of membership in 1933 for his independent streak. Arrested numerous times, he had Casa Malaparte created in Capri where he lived under house arrest. After the Second World War, he became a filmmaker and moved closer to both Tagliati's Italian Communist Party and the Catholic Church the once a staunch atheist, reputedly becoming members of both before his death. Topic Biography Topic Background Born in Prato, Tuscany, Malaparte was a son of a German father, Erwin Suckert, a textile manufacturing executive, and his Lombard wife, the former Evelina Pirelli. He was educated at Collegio Sacognini in Prato and at La Sapienza University of Rome. In 1918 he started his career as a journalist. Malaparte fought in World War I, earning a captaincy in the 5th Alpine Regiment and several decorations for valor. His chosen surname Malaparte, which he used from 1925, means, "...evil, wrong side," and is a play on Napoleon's family name, Bonaparte, which means, in Italian, "...good side." National Fascist Party In 1922 he took part in Benito Mussolini's march on Rome. In 1924, he founded the Roman periodical La Conquista dello Stato, the conquest of the state, a title that would inspire Ramiro Ledesma Ramos La Conquista dello Stato. As a member of the Partito Nazionale Fascista, he founded several periodicals and contributed essays and articles to others, as well as writing numerous books, starting from the early 1920s, and directing two metropolitan newspapers. In 1926 he founded with Massimo Bontempelli the literary quarterly, 900. Later he became a co-editor of Fiera Letteraria, 1928-31, and an editor of La Stampa in Turin. His polemical war novel essay, Viva Caporetto, 1921, criticized corrupt Rome and the Italian upper classes as the real enemy the book was forbidden because it offended the Royal Italian Army. <laughs> Technique du coup d'état In Technique du coup d'état 1931, Malaparte set out a study of the tactics of coup d'état, particularly focusing on the Bolshevik Revolution and that of Italian fascism. Here he stated that, "...the problem of the conquest and defense of the state is not a political one it is a technical problem." A way of knowing when and how to occupy the vital state resources, the telephone exchanges, the water reserves and the electricity generators, etc. He taught a hard lesson that a revolution can wear itself out in strategy. He emphasizes Leon Trotsky's role in organizing the October Revolution technically, while Lenin was more interested in strategy. The book emphasizes that Joseph Stalin thoroughly comprehended the technical aspects employed by Trotsky and so was able to avert left opposition coup attempts better than Kerensky. For Malaparte, Mussolini's revolutionary outlook was very much born of his time as a Marxist. On the topic of Adolf Hitler, the book was far more doubtful and critical. He considered Hitler to be a reactionary. In the same book, first published in French by Grasset, he entitled Chapter 8, A Woman, Hitler. This led to Malaparte being stripped of his National Fascist Party membership and sent to internal exile from 1933 to 1938 on the island of Lipari. Arrests and Casa Malaparte 
He was freed on the personal intervention of Mussolini's son-in-law and heir apparent Galeazzo Ciano. Mussolini's regime arrested Malaparte again in 1938, 1939, 1941, and 1943 and imprisoned him in Rome's jail Regina Celli. During that time 1938 he built a house with the architect Adalberto Libera, known as the Casa Malaparte, on Capo Masulo, on the Isle of Capri. It was later used as a location in Jean-Luc Godard's film, La Mepris. Shortly after his time in jail he published books of magical realist autobiographical short stories, which culminated in the stylistic prose of Donna Come Me, Woman Like Me, 1940. Second World War and Kaput His remarkable knowledge of Europe and its leaders is based upon his experience as a correspondent and in the Italian diplomatic service. In 1941 he was sent to cover the Eastern Front as a correspondent for Corriere della Sera. The articles he sent back from the Ukrainian fronts, many of which were suppressed, were collected in 1943 and brought out under the title Il Volga Nasce in Europa. The Volga Rises in Europe. The experience provided the basis for his two most famous books, Caput 1944 and The Skin 1949. Caput, his novelistic account of the war, surreptitiously written, presents the conflict from the point of view of those doomed to lose it. Malaparte's account is marked by lyrical observations, as when he encounters a detachment of Wehrmacht soldiers fleeing a Ukrainian battlefield. When Germans become afraid, when that mysterious German fear begins to creep into their bones, they always arouse a special horror and pity. Their appearance is miserable, their cruelty sad, their courage silent and hopeless. As the Italian reporter, in his Caput World War II testimony, Malaparte described an interview with Pavelic. While he spoke, I gazed at a wicker basket on the Poglavnik's desk. The lid was raised and the basket seemed to be filled with mussels, or shelled oysters, as they are occasionally displayed in the windows of Fortnum and Mason in Piccadilly in London. Casertano looked at me and winked. Wouldn't you like a good oyster stew? Are they Dalmatian oysters? I asked the Poglavnik. Ante Pavelic removed the lid from the basket and revealed the mussels, that slimy and jelly-like mass, and he said smiling, with that tired good-natured smile of his. It is a present from my loyal Eustaches. Forty pounds of human eyes. Milan Kundera's view of the Caput is summarized in his essay The Tragedy of Central Europe. It is strange, yes, but understandable, for this reportage is something other than reportage, it is a literary work whose aesthetic intention is so strong, so apparent, that the sensitive reader automatically excludes it from the context of accounts brought to bear by historians, journalists, political analysts, memorists. According to D. Moore's editorial note, in The Skin, Malaparte extends the great fresco of European society he began in Caput. There the scene was Eastern Europe, here it is Italy during the years from 1943 to 1945, instead of Germans, the invaders are the American armed forces. In all the literature that derives from the Second World War, there is no other book that so brilliantly or so woundingly present triumphant American innocence against the background of the European experience of destruction and moral collapse. The book was condemned by the Roman Catholic Church, and placed on the Index Librorum Prohibitorum. The skin was adapted for the cinema in 1981. From November 1943 to March 1946 he was attached to the American High Command in Italy as an Italian liaison officer. Articles by Curzio Malaparte have appeared in many literary periodicals of note in France, the United Kingdom, Italy and the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Film directing and later life After the war, Malaparte's political sympathies veered to the left and he became a member of the Italian Communist Party. In 1947, Malaparte settled in Paris and wrote dramas without much success. His play Du Côté de Chez Proust was based on the life of Marcel Proust and Das Kapital was a portrait of Karl Marx. Christo Proibito, Forbidden Christ, was Malaparte's moderately successful film, which he wrote, directed and scored in 1950. It won the City of Berlin special prize at the first Berlin International Film Festival in 1951. In the story, a war veteran returns to his village to avenge the death of his brother, shot by the Germans. 
It was released in the United States in 1953 as Strange Deception and voted among the five best foreign films by the National Board of Review. He also produced the variety show Sexophone and planned to cross the United States on bicycle. Just before his death, Malaparte completed the treatment of another film, Il Compagno P. After the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, Malaparte became interested in the Maoist version of communism but his journey to China was cut short by illness, and he was flown back to Rome. I.O. in Russia E. in China, his Journal of the Events, was published posthumously in 1958. Malaparte's final book, Maledetti Tuscani, his attack on middle and upper class culture, appeared in 1956. In the collection of writings Mama Marcia, published posthumously in 1959, Malaparte writes about the youth of the post-World War II era with homophobic tones, describing it as effeminate and tending to homosexuality and communism. The same content is expressed in the chapters, The Pink Meat and Children of Adam of the Skin. He died in Rome from lung cancer on 19 July 1957. Topic main writings Viva Caporetto, 1921, a.k.a. La Revolta dei Santi Maledetti Technique du coup d'état, 1931, translated as coup d'état, the technique of revolution, E. P. Dutton & Co., Inc., 1932 Donna Cummi, 1940, translated as Woman Like Me, Troubadour Italian Studies, 2006 ISBN 1-905237-84-7 The Volga Rises in Europe, 1943 ISBN one 1 158 096 1 Caput 1944 ISBN 0 8101 1341 4 Translated as Caput New York Review Books Classics 2007 Lapel 1949 ISBN 0 8101 1572 7 Translated as The Skin by David Moore New York Review Books Classics 2013 ISBN 978 1 59017 622 1 Paperback Du Cote de Chez Proust 1951 Maledetti Tuscani 1956 translated as Those Cursed Tuscans Ohio University Press 1964 The Kremlin Ball 1957 translated by Jenny McPhee 2018 ISBN 9781681372099 Mus Il Grande Imbecile 1999 ISBN 9788879841771 Benedetti Italiani Postumo Corretto da Enrico Falchi 1961, Edito da Vallecci Firenze 2005, Presentazioni di Giordano Bruno Guerri ISBN 88-8427-074-X <laughs> Directed The Forbidden Christ 1950. Topic. See also Louis Ferdinand Céline Galeazzo Ciano and Etta Ciano